uh, Mike McGraw. I'm here with Tip Top Audio at the NAMM 2013 show. Um, doing a little video here for uh, Nick with SonicState.com. Uh, great to talk to you guys today. Uh, my voice is a little shot because I've been so excited talking about our gear the last couple of days, so I'm sorry for the horse throat. Uh, with Tip Top Audio, we've got a lot of new stuff going on right now. Uh, if we look over here at some of the portable cases, We've reverse engineered the 808 and 909 drum voices uh, and brought them out in individual modules uh, at great price points. The skinny guys you see are $99. Uh, the double wide ones are 130 to 150. Uh, so really musician friendly prices. The big news for us this year is uh, three new sequencers we brought out. And uh, on the far left over here in its own rack, as uh, the C24 digital hits, um, and this is uh, we've really designed it to work with your your DAW software. Uh, communicates with the Copperland protocol over Ethernet. Let's uh, let's just pull out uh, the 24 um, analog gate trigger accent voltages uh, that can be controlled from your your software sequencer. Uh, moving over a little bit, uh, the circadian rhythm is uh, is our step sequencer. It's eight channels, eight steps. The steps can then be saved in up to eight slots. The slots can be chained together and the chains can be saved in up to eight presets. Uh, so you're going to have to do quite a lot of variation starting with eight steps. It's really straightforward though for anyone who's used to, used to step sequencing. Right now we're looking at channel one being edited. It's routed to the, the 909 kick drum. You can see I got kicks on one and two. You know, we can put them in on five and six and eight just by clicking the buttons. Um, when you're feeling, you know, creatively burned out, there's a nice randomized function. I can randomize channel one and it just throws in some random hits. Uh, you can then edit out, you know, what you don't want to see. Let's change the channel here. Um, really straightforward, you know, intuitive step sequencer. A any, lot of fun. Swing? Uh, it doesn't have swing right now. Uh, this is the prototype. There's still going to be some features added. It has mutes that are fun to play with, looping, copy, paste, clear, uh, as well as various sync and reset options. The really exciting one, though, um, we want to focus on because we only have a few minutes here, uh, is what we call the trigger riot. This is a different approach to sequencing. <clears throat> It's um, basically, we've got, uh, we have 16 clock dividers that can be added together in various different ways to create streams of triggers uh, that we can use to sequence things. It's also a very, very, very stable and accurate clock source. So let's set the clock to 120. Uh, right now, I've got uh, sequencer one is being routed to the hi-hat. Uh, so the sequencer's one is these four pots. There's sequencer two, sequencer three, sequencer four. Uh, then vertically, we have five, six, seven, and eight. It can be in both a matrix and an independent mode. In matrix mode, you know, this pot here is the first divider in sequencer two and the second divider in A. Because these are endless encoders, you can put it in, in an independent mode, in which case a pot can represent two different values. Uh, so to give you an idea how it works, let me just clear this guy out for a moment. Um, we're running at a clock of 120. I'm gonna work with sequencer one, which is the horizontal row at the top. It's being read at the high hats. I turn the first knob, it gives me a division up to 255 of the clock. Uh, I'm gonna have to run it again. So you can see, I mean, at one, you're, you know, you're hearing the full clock. We'll put it on, on two, so you know, you're getting a half division of the clock. Pretty straightforward, you can see the LED flashing every time it's triggering the hi-hat. That's pretty easy to understand. I can go now and I can add a second divider in. So if I put it on two, the hits are gonna fall at the same time, you don't hear a difference. So let's you turn that down to five, you're now getting a tick, 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 tick. Go to your third divider, add that in, give it another value. As you can start to see, just by adding together the different clock dividers, we wind up coming up with interesting rhythms. With the step sequencer, you kind of have to know what you want. You, know, you, you click in the hits you want to hear. What I like about this guy is you can just start tweaking the knobs, and when you find a pattern that you really like, you can then just go and save it as one of the presets. You can see I'm just turning knobs here, and, and right away, you know, we've got a fun little danceable beat going. Uh, everything can be saved. Uh, it's non-volatile memory. You can pull the module out of the rack, stick it somewhere else. All your work is in there. We also have some modes we can control. Right now, we're just looking at divide mode. Uh, I can put it into step mode, and then I can actually, you know, force steps to be in certain be certain points of the grid. Uh, we have probability mode, where we can then you know, turn the knobs to, to determine the probability of that divider's hits coming in or not. Uh, so then you have you know, less of a static drum beat, something that changes here and there. Uh, this is the prototype. We only have those three modes at the moment. There's a speed mode uh, that's coming in the new firmware uh, that basically turns them into clock multipliers as well as clock dividers. Uh, we have uh, time shift mode um, as well as a pulse width mode where the dividers start to overlap. 
That's a really um, interesting idea, actually. It, it is, and it's a really fun, intuitive way to come up with, with good beats. Um, there's going to be a touch plate controller for it. We can slave a bunch of them together. Uh, this thing is just getting started. Our engineer is going crazy with ideas. Uh, so it's a really exciting time you know, for anyone into Eurorack, anyone into Modular, um, and you know, really, really cool time for Tip Top Audio. Uh, so thanks a bunch, Sonic Stage. It's, uh, it's always great to see you guys, and I uh, look forward to your NAM coverage this year. Thank you.